It seems that government distrust is at an all-time high, with roughly 17% of the American population believing that leaders have their best interests in mind. After Vietnam War to gate the war on terror and other mishaps involving those at the top, faith in those elected has fallen since the 1960s. But there are other, more sinister reasons you could have for not always buying what the government is selling you. Throughout American history, some of the population has been subject to experiments many times completely unaware of them. Some of these experiments run the gamut from mildly annoying to an absolute betrayal of a fellow human being. The examples we're about to look at today are mostly of the latter, so buckle up. And just before we get started, there are nine entries in today's video. We think we were gonna pull on a tenth, but then we just didn't think it was quite up to scratch. Number nine, mustard gas experiments. Mustard gas, or sulfur mustard, was first put to use in World War I. The chemicals cause severe burning of pretty much every area of the body that they come into contact with. Banned by the United Nations in 1993, mustard gas also takes up to a day for the symptoms to begin, which is a hell all on its own. It's strange 1993 was the year the UN decided to grow a conscience, because that's the year the US government declassified a program of experiments they conducted with mustard gas during the Second World War. In that program, America's own troops were exposed to the gas and then had their reactions documented. The tests appear to have been voluntary, though the fact that they were conducted in total secrecy lacked any kind of post-test healthcare and the soldiers were threatened with dishonorable discharge if they spoke about them does make you wonder a bit about the voluntary part. Oh, and also just for fun, these subjects were grouped by race. Number 8. Tuskegee Syphilis the Tuskegee Airmen were a legendary Alabama-based squad of black airmen, the first to serve in World War II. Prior to 1940, African Americans were not able to take to the skies for the US military. Round about the same time these men were making their town of Tuskegee and country as a whole proud, down the road a bit of the government was undoing some of that very progress. The Tuskegee syphilis experiments were an insane study done by the US Public Health Service in which they let hundreds of poor black men think that they were being treated for their existing syphilis. Though they never told the men they had the specific disease, they told them it was simply bad blood. They, of course, weren't being treated at all and were given placebos so that the researchers could see how far syphilis could progress untreated. The men went blind, insane, even died, even as penicillin, which could literally cure the disease, became available in 1947. Even when funding for the study ran out, the men were still not treated and never told they had syphilis. It went on until 1972, when the study finally leaked nationwide. During those few decades, 28 men died directly from syphilis, 100 from complications, and 19 children inherited the disease of birth. Number 7. Dioxin Poison Experiments Agent Orange and its use in the Vietnam War was one of the darkest chapters in American history that's already rife with dark chapters. Agent Orange contained a poison called dioxin, which is already present in the world, and the higher something is in the food chain, the more dioxin it possesses. But when it's a concentrated dose, that's when severe health effects like cancer start creeping in. The Dow Chemical Company was curious about the health effects of dioxin in the 1960s, so they tested it on inmates at a Philadelphia prison. 70 in all volunteered, and it's the only time on record that subjects were administered external doses of the poison willingly. Alright, so you probably heard willingly there and might be thinking, well, okay then, but what's the big deal? Well, no records were kept of the experiment, no studies were done to follow up after the testing, and 10 subjects were given way higher amounts of the poison than Dow recommended. Also, all of the records and results were destroyed, which is always a sign of trustworthiness, and we have no idea if the 70 men lived forever or all died of leukemia. Number 6. Military Poison Tests it's bad enough when a military uses biological weapons that harm its own troops, see Agent Orange, but what if you found out that they turned these toxins on their own civilians? You could possibly argue that soldiers on the battlefield accept some kind of risk in their environments, but that logic it doesn't apply to everyday civilians just living their normal lives. But that's exactly what happened in San Francisco in the fall of 1950. A Navy ship sprayed microbes into the air just off the coast of the city in an attempt to see how a major metropolis could be vulnerable to such an attack. That's right, they didn't tell a soul in the city about the test, and they repeated it for seven straight days. Local hospitals were astounded to see patients infected with a bacteria that they'd never seen in their walls before, and at least one person is thought to have died from the experiment. Every chemical that was used, the government swore was completely safe once the public found out. They have all since been identified as pathogens. In the decades since, numerous similar tests were found to have taken place in other U.S. cities, from New York to St. Louis. Number 5. MK Ultra. 
This one is ubiquitous in American culture. It was a shady government mind control program, but as far as specifics go, it seems not many people know just how bonkers MKUltra was. The CIA sanctioned the program in 1953 as a way to weaken people during interrogations and to control someone completely. For 20 years, they used all sorts of sometimes illegal tactics like psychedelics, hypnosis, and torture to get the results that they wanted. Many of the test subjects were involuntarily subjected to these methods. Fear from the Cold War and from soldiers returning from Korea sparked the CIA to seek out more ways to conduct MKUltra, from prisons to mental health facilities. Mob boss Whitey Bulger was even a subject and spoke of horrifying hallucinations and being administered LSD. All of this culminated in a test called Operation Midnight Climax, where random people in many cities were just given LSD unknowingly. By the late 1960s and early 70s, the government decided that unconsenting individuals subjected to acid doses and sex surveillance was probably not okay. Number 4. HIV Pregnancy Study the United States government has a long and illustrious history of conducting unannounced experiments and generally meddling in the lives of ordinary citizens. But they aren't shy about leaving the safety of American borders. No, sir. Just ask pregnant, HIV-positive African, Thai, and Dominican women. Oh, wait, you can't because they're dead. There is a drug called AZT that, when taken by a pregnant woman with HIV, can decrease the chance of transmission to her baby by 66%. That's huge. So, of course, the government wanted to find a cheaper way as AZT costs about $1,000 per patient. In these countries, half the pregnant women were given less AZT than normally administered in the US, and the other half were simply given placebos. Now, if you're paying close attention, this means that half of those women will most likely give birth to a baby with HIV, instead of, you know, just giving them the correct amount of the drug. Number 3. Black Cancer Patient Irradiating Part of the hysteria and paranoia of the Cold War was worrying about radiation from the bombs that everyone knew were going to fall at some point. But the government, they weren't really sure about how much radiation the human body could withstand and still function. And that's pretty useful information to know. The Pentagon, having the curiosity of a four-year-old child, wondered what the breaking point would be. If nuclear war were ever to take place, they needed to know what their soldiers could handle in regards to radiation. So they followed their history in Tuskegee and tested black people without their knowledge. From 1960 until 1971, black cancer patients had their whole bodies irradiated, even though that specific type of radiation was useless for their illness. They were just told that this new treatment could help them. During the course of an hour, they received the radiation equivalent of 20 thousand x-rays. The year after the experiments ended, it was revealed that about a quarter of the subjects had died of radiation poisoning. The doctor who spearheaded these tests recently received a commendation for his career achievements, so apparently karma's not a thing. Number 2. The Monster Study now, many of us aren't scientists. Fewer of us are speech pathologists. But you'd imagine that most of us would say that yelling and berating a child with speech problems would not help with their affliction. But that's what they did in 1939 at the University of Iowa during the so-called Monster Study. Twenty-two orphans were culled together by Dr. Wendell Johnson in an effort to disprove all prevailing theories on stuttering. Why orphans, you might ask? Well, that's apparently just because the scientists are terrible people. Before testing, they were separated into two groups those who stuttered and those who did not. Only half of the children in the stuttering group were actually stutterers, by the way. During the six months of experiments, the orphans who spoke well were given plenty of positive reinforcement. The ones in the stuttering group, which again contained many perfectly speaking kids, were subjected to long-winded lectures and belittling comments about how they spoke. The results? Well, how about this? Of the six normal children in the stuttering group, five began stuttering after the negative therapy. Of the five children who had stuttered before the therapy, three became worse. In comparison, only one of the children in the group labeled normal had greater speech problems after the study. So, labels do matter. Children can undergo permanent damage if not carefully handled during a study that they weren't even made aware of. Some developed speaking problems that they carried for the rest of their lives. They did, however, receive a sizable settlement in 2007. Number 1. Project 4.1 most folks conjure up the New Mexico desert in their minds when you talk about when the US first started testing atomic bombs. And they'd be partly right. But America also dropped a hell of a lot of them on the Marshall Islands in the Pacific. From 1946 to 1958, the US tested 67 atomic bombs on the islands, which had a population of 52,000 people. Obviously, those residents, they had to leave. The largest bomb, the Castle Bravo test in 1954, was when the government decided to conduct a study on the effects of fallout on the population. The fallout cloud, it seems, accidentally blew over a significant number of people. 
That tends to happen when you test a nuclear bomb a thousand times stronger than Hiroshima. Some people say that the fallout exposure was intentional. All told, 239 residents were exposed to significant radiation levels at rates 580 times higher than a normal weekly amount. A 2012 documentary spoke to some of those residents who remembered being sick and having all of their hair fall out, as well as having stories of deformed babies. So I'm not going to ask if you enjoyed that video, but I do hope you found it illuminating. If you did, you know what to do. Please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Also, why not check out my other channel called Biographics? I'm going to link to that below. And as always, thank you for watching.